Welcome to Catholic Messenger Conversations podcast. This is a podcast of the Catholic Messenger newspaper, and today we are excited to have as our guests Father James Flattery and Deacon Andrew Rowan Bueller, who are have just been recently ordained. J- Father James to the priesthood and Deacon Andrew to the diaconate. And this just happened last weekend, I think it was June 6th, under very unusual circumstances um, during this period of the coronavirus pandemic. And so I wanted to go ahead and ask a few questions of the two of you, if I could. And I think I want to start with Father James, first of all. How would you describe your ordination of the priesthood in your hometown church, Immaculate Conception, Colfax? And how did that celebration compare to what you anticipated a year ago when you were ordained a deacon at Sacred Heart Cathedral in Davenport? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on the podcast, Barb. I would say definitely it was a bittersweet experience being able to be ordained in my home parish. It's something I never would have imagined, you know, potentially happening six years ago. Um, It was great to be able to be ordained, you know, with my local pastor and Deacon Joe Dvorak and some of the others. But it was also kind of sad that unfortunately only 10 people were allowed to be there with me at the church and it was kind of heartbreaking you know because you think about all the people who've journeyed with you you know up to this point so for the last six years you know the parishes that I've visited and as uh, you know as an ordination it's kind of a big celebration for the diocese but unfortunately with COVID-19 it was a very kind of a trimmed down celebration um, mm-hmm. in comparison yeah. to the last you know in comparison to last year, you know, we had the large celebration, Father Terry Ball, Father Scott Foley being ordained, and then myself as a deacon last year was a a great, great mass that, you know, the diocese was able to come together. It was music. The choir was great. A lot of the seminarians were able to be there. A lot of the diocese was able to come together. But unfortunately, this year with just the pandemic, it was kind of a smaller Smaller affair. It was it was nice because there were things that you definitely wouldn't have been able to see necessarily in the cathedral, uh, but it was definitely kind of a bittersweet moment for me. Oh, and tell me, what, what were some of the things you might have been able to see um, at your church than than that you might have seen at the cathedral? Yeah, I would say without a doubt, just kind of how close and how quiet things were. So you're kind of able to hear potentially hear you know Bishop and I kind of having a small you know, a little small conversation yeah. before he anointed my hands with oil and you're, you're just up close and you're able to see things more clearly. Whereas, you know, there's, there's not a bad seat in the house at the cathedral, but unfortunately there are some seats that are farther away from the altar, but with the live stream, you're able to be up close to the altar. You know, what I noticed was the quiet. It was, I mean, you could you could hear when they would set the book down on the altar or something. I mean, it was that quiet. Was that was that kind of strange, or how was what was that like? It was it was definitely strange in that, you know, cause last year you have all this great music, the litany of the saints, and this year, you know, with it just being red, and then, you know, unfortunately, when we were when they were removing things from the altar, uh, unfortunately, my patent was on the missile. Unfortunately, Bishop didn't realize it, and it went clinking to the floor, so you're able to hear it on the live stream, <laughs> whereas, you know, potentially in the cathedral, it might have been covered up by the sound of music. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I wanted to ask Deacon Andrew, too. How did your ordination to the diaconate in your hometown church, Saints Mary Matthias and Muscatine, compare to what you you might have envisioned a year ago or even six months ago? Well, I come from a big family, and so for sure I had always envisioned that my ordination, obviously this year to diaconate and then God willing next year it can be, um, would be something quite large uh, just in uh, in the amount of people that would be attending. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that was the biggest biggest difference from kind of what I would have expected uh, my ordination to look like. Um, But I got to say, having the opportunity to have, to have made those promises and to be ordained at my home parish in Muscatine, where I've received all of my sacraments thus far, uh, was a, was a real blessing and and something that, you know, just a few months ago, I didn't think was going to be the case. And and so 
looking back on it, I think that was a real gift uh, to be able to take this next step towards the priesthood and, and ministry in the diocese. That kind of the place where it all started for me at my baptism. That is so cool. I mean, it, it's exciting. It's still, you know, no matter how it looked different, it, it's still, I mean, it was the ordination. Both of the ordinations were, it had to have been just such a, a, a beautiful milestone in your lives. I mean, I, I can't even imagine how special that must be that, you know, in the essence, stripped down to its very essence, it, it is, you know, it's that sacrament, and you guys embrace it, and we are so grateful. We, the Catholics of the Diocese of Davenport, I think I can speak on behalf of all of us for that. So I wanted to ask both of you, what were some of the highlights of your Mass of Ordination? And why don't I start with um, Father James? I would say definitely some of the big highlights for me were just probably the, the first one would have been when Father Jake Greiner, the, my vesting priest, came and invested me for the first time as a priest. You know, it was a very powerful experience, you know, putting the stole on and the chasuble. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. And then I'd also say just being able to confect the Eucharist for the first time with, you know, Bishop Zinka, Father Sia, Father Jake Greiner, and then Father Ron Hodges was a very incredible and powerful experience for me as well. Wow. That, that would have been really cool. How about you, um, Deacon Andrew, what, what were some of the highlights for you? Yeah. So one would have been the, the readings. So the first and second reading and then, and then the gospel as well. Um, just kind of felt almost with the with the absence of a of a full church, and then Deacon McDonald, who's a good friend that uh, I've known for quite a long time, and he's the deacon at my home parish in Muscatine. Uh, when he was when he was proclaiming the word of God, just kind of you know him looking at me during that during certain verses and whatnot. And so I found found the liturgy of the word to be quite profound and special. Um, and then additionally, the litany, which, and Father James already, already mentioned this, obviously the litany is such when, when the, the man to be ordained is lying prostrate, it's a, it's a pretty powerful moment in the liturgy. I mean, for everyone, but specifically for the, the person being ordained. Um, so to not have that chanted, you know, is, is a bit of a loss, but I was able to uh, insert some special saints uh, who have been special to me throughout my own life. Uh, and then the patron saints of uh, a lot of my siblings that that weren't able to attend uh, attend the ordination in person, and so that was just I found that to be a nice way of, of kind of bringing them along inside the church. Oh, that is so cool! So you 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 had the patron saints in mind of your siblings. You, don't, don't you have like ten siblings or something? <laughs> uh, there's only five of us, but so I did my siblings, um, and then my uh, I have a couple nephews and a niece. And then in-laws as well. So, so I was able to, I think, mostly get get them all covered, which was, yeah, very nice. Oh, that's awesome. That is terrific. I wanted to ask both of you, how did wearing a face covering affect your experience of the sacrament of ordination? I realize that's not a huge deal, but I have to admit, as someone who was watching it live stream, it was kind of unreal to see that. I mean, to see all these people in face masks. And you just don't see that in ordination or even at... You know, Mass for the most part, but we haven't been at Mass for a while. So I just was wondering what your experience was like with that. And was it hard to breathe or to speak or to understand what someone was saying? I mean, maybe I'm over, you know, exaggerating on that. But what was that like for each of you? Um, Deacon Andrew, what was that like for you? Well, you know, obviously our faces express uh, so much emotion. And at an ordination, there's plenty of moments where, uh, emotions kind of run high, uh, whether that be uh, in, in a serious vein, but then also kind of the joy that you are experiencing. And, and so I always kind of felt like that wasn't able to be expressed, especially when it's over live stream as well. So, you know, at moments afterwards, you know, when I was smiling, it was like, well, I don't know if people could even tell I was smiling. Um, and, and so things like that. And so I would say that was kind of weird of just kind of feeling almost, you um, like, uh, I don't know, the, yeah. the, you were kind of hidden in a certain sense. Um, but beyond that, as far as like speaking and, and comfortability and whatnot, I didn't, I didn't experience too many issues. Oh, that's good. I suppose you could have had like, like a smile and a marker on your face because that would have been probably sacrilegious, but 
Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, who no. What, what about you, Father James? What was that like for you? I would definitely say a lot of things, kind of like what Andrew was talking about, where you know, there's a lot of joy within an ordination mass, but unfortunately um, with wearing masks, you're not able to see a lot of the you know smiling faces and, and with it just being hidden with face covering. Um, there's definitely some times where it can seem like some things can be muffled when you're wearing a mu- or when you're wearing a mask. Uh-huh. Um, definitely, probably, I'd say a week before the ordination, I was just you know practicing, you know practicing being able to celebrate mass in anticipation of ordination, and just practicing with you know having a mask on and getting the proper positions. Oh yeah, that would be a that would be a challenge. I didn't think about that. That would have been kind of embarrassing, I guess, maybe, but that never happened to either one of you. The masks stayed right where they needed to be, didn't they? Yep. Correct. And, and I was super thankful that seminary and Dane Dickinson was actually uh he was actually the one to be able to make masks for the priests in the diocese. He was able to make a mask for me, which was really cool and that he made them look like a Roman collar for oh, the face so mask. Cool. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Is he, is he, did he have to do some sewing for that or what? I, or, or that was it, uh, I, I didn't see how that was, that was done, but maybe not. I, I yeah, admire he, people who are able he, to make masks. Yeah. He actually did a lot of sewing, um, during his time at the chancery after our academics ended from Mundelein with just, with Mundelein closing down early and sending us back to the diocese, he's able to have some free time after school got out, but before he started his summer assignment. Oh, wow. Um, and I wanted to ask you, how many people were you able to attend your, your – how many people were you able to invite to attend your Mass in person, Father James? How many were you – what was the limit, and how did you choose who you would invite? Yeah, so the limit was 10 people, which included myself as well. Um, So you had three individuals from the diocese that were going to take spots. So you needed a spot for Bishop Zinkula, Father C, the vocation instructor, and then an MC to just ensure that the liturgy flowed smoothly. Uh Um, And then I also needed to have my local pastor and the local deacon. That got me up to five, and then I added my parents. Got me up to seven. Um, also needed an altar server. So I got an altar server, Dane Dickinson, the seminary who made the masks. Mm-hmm. And then I was able to invite one of my older brothers out of the three, and then I was the tenth individual. Oh at, my uh, gosh! At the How did you decide which of your brothers to invite? Uh, so one of my brothers lives in Kansas City. So for that one, it was kind of an earlier kind of a discussion of well. It might be kind of a long drive at this point. I wasn't sure what the ordination was going to look like uh, back in the later part of April when we were just trying to trying to go through logistics and planning it. Uh, oh yeah. So then I went right down the list since he's the oldest, and I went to the the next oldest and invited my brother Paul. Wow. And and how did, was there for both of you? Was there a lot of extra planning that went into the, even though it was a more simplified ordination? Did it take more planning or? Is that hard to say because you didn't have the traditional, um, you know, the, the celebration or the typical celebration? Or is that hard uh, to say? Uh, yeah, James? really, um, yeah, obviously we're blessed. So uh, Deacon Frank Agnoli kind of took care of most of the planning uh, from the okay. diocesan um, standpoint. And so really, uh, and, and, you know, just kind of some, a little bit of coordination with the home parish and then as far as live streaming and whatnot. Um, oh, okay. And then was able to have the, an instrumentalist play the piano uh, at the ordination from from Saint Matthias, um, and so just you know very little planning on my end, uh, which was kind of a blessing. So, wow, uh, Deacon Andrew, I wanted to ask you too. How did you decide who to invite to your ordination? Yeah, so obviously my parents, uh, Mark and Sharon, and then I had two other open spots uh, after you know factoring in myself and obviously all the clergy present. Uh, and so I, I invited my my paternal grandparents, uh, Carl and Mary and Ron Bueller, um, and, uh, which was a blessing. So obviously, you know, they're, they're both very healthy 80-year-olds, but they've been quite 
hunkered down for going on a few months now. And so uh, they've been obviously watching who they've come into contact with and all that. And so for them, it was a real blessing to be able not only to leave the house, uh, but uh, to be, be there present at the ordination. And so that worked out really well because uh, I wanted them to be there for sure. And then I didn't want to have to get into the, the decision of which siblings to invite and which ones didn't get to come because that would have obviously uh, probably caused me more more problems down the road. So Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, that's really something. Um, how did you feel, both of you, how did you feel about people watching your ordination mass online in real time? Did you think about that or did you watch it afterwards? What about you, Father James? So I was really excited that we were able to live stream the ordination mass with Bundline where I go to, where I went to school at. Uh, we have a teaching parish, so I had helped out the teaching parish for the last three years. So I was really thankful that we were able to have a live stream. So did you have a lot of people from the live st- or live stream watching then, people from all over your your six years of um, journeying to the priesthood? Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure on the, the figures for how many people joined the live stream, but I know that there were definitely parishioners back in Chicago that were watching the live stream, which I was very thankful for. And then it was really cool just to have, you know, people that may – not have been able to attend an ordination before, be able to tune in and watch an ordination live, I thought was really nice. That's very cool. Uh, Deacon Andrew, what about you? What was that like for you to have your ordination mass live streamed? Yeah, so it wasn't really something uh, I thought about much during the ordination itself. I'm kind of blessed in Muscatine. They've, they've had a pretty good system for live streaming up and running. So, um, oh, that's good. So, yeah, so that was great. And like Father James said, it, it did – give the opportunity for a lot of people who otherwise probably wouldn't have been able to make it back to Iowa uh, for the ordination to participate in it uh, and to witness it uh, through the internet. And so mm-hmm. I think for that, that aspect was, yeah, really, really awesome and very glad that it was able to kind of go uh, quite seamlessly uh, so that others who, who wanted to be uh, involved and, and witness it were able to do so, even though it was through the internet. Wow. Did either of you watch your ordination mass afterwards or sometime later? I have How not watched it all the way through yet, but uh, I did I did watch uh, a couple parts. And uh, it, it's kind of nice, you know, that there's a good recording of it now. Uh, so um be kind of a good thing to have for the future. What about you, Father James? So I haven't, just the same as Andrew, I haven't watched it all the way through. I went back and, and went through, watched the ordination right of it itself, and then watch through the Eucharistic prayer. So I haven't watched all the way through yet, but definitely Mm -hmm. excited to have that record. Oh, that's great. And then I wanted to ask both of you, how has the coronavirus shaped your appreciation for your ministry? And I wanted to start with you, Father James. It's definitely an interesting experience in that we had to kind of come back to the playbook and kind of look at how do we minister now to individuals who are, you know, now, you know, stuck in their homes, you know, people aren't able to go out, you know, canceled and just how we've been able to now kind of switch more of the ministry opportunities more online, whether that's through Zoom meetings or Facebook Live or different things like that. Um, One of the exciting things that I was just talking about with Father Ron Hodges, my local pastor, was how many people are now watching the live stream of Mass that, you know, haven't been to Mass you know, potentially in several months to years. Wow. That's that's pretty amazing. How about you, Deacon Andrew? How's this shaping your appreciation for ministry this whole unusual time? Yeah. So obviously the the gift of the internet's allowed us to, to in the best way possible, well, not necessarily the best way possible, but a pretty good way uh, to keep people uh, involved in, in different things happening at the parish and, uh, trying to keep some sort of semblance of their faith life, uh, even though it's being done virtually. But I've obviously been quite impressed with just the desire among so many people I've spoken to uh, to get back to church. Uh, and so just kind of seeing how um, how important uh, being at Mass uh, at the church is, obviously, to receive the Eucharist um, is for uh, the faithful in the diocese, and so I've just really been struck by um, how how yeah their their hunger uh, to get back. And obviously, we we make do uh, in the meantime through the internet. Um, but 
hopefully we'll we'll be back together uh, soon. So. That's awesome. And I'm I'm wondering what are you doing in your ministry this summer? I'll start with Father James. What are your what are you doing this summer? Yeah, so currently until July first until I begin my assignment down in Burlington and Dodgeville. Um right now I'm celebrating mass in my home parish with my local pastor, Father Ron Hodges. Um this weekend I'll be celebrating mass at the Newman Center. Um and then oh, the cool. following weekend I'll be in Riverside Richmond Wildman. And I'm also helping to cover vacation for a priest. So just being able to kind of be able to get out to some of the areas of the diocese that, you know, I might've been for a summer or have a connection to and be able to celebrate mass there and connect with people. Well, I've got a question though. Okay. So we haven't started mass yet. Have we public masses in our diocese? Correct. Correct. So, so is this anticipation of being able to do that? Cause, if we're not celebrating public masses, why would you, I mean, this is maybe a dumb question, but why would you need to go out and help in parishes where they're not able to go to mass? Yeah. So uh, for the parishes that I'm going to be going to help out at, uh, they Mm -hmm. all live stream the masses. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. And then hopefully, hopefully by the end of the month, we'll, we'll get some good news and we'll be able to resume public masses, but you know, it's kind of all up in the air right now. Um, if we don't resume, then it'll definitely be through the live stream. And then after we resume public masses, um, I believe that the parishes that I'm going to be helping out at will still live stream the masses for those that, you know, don't feel like it's safe for them yet to come to the right. parish. That yeah, way they still can feel sense. connected. Oh, that makes sense. And, and Deacon Andrew, what about you? What are your plans this summer? Yep, so I'm currently in Riverside helping out. Uh, there, and then Wellman and Richmond as well. And so this is my third day here. And obviously we're we're kind of in the process of when we get the go-ahead to start having public masses again, um, you know, trying to make sure we're prepared to do that, do so in a, in a, in a safe uh, and, and good way. Um, mm-hmm. And so right now that's kind of where we're focused. And then as, you know, as I get more settled in, we'll kind of see, uh, what what other opportunities will present themselves? Obviously, it's not it's not kind of a normal beacon summer because uh, it would be great to be you know going to people's houses or having meetings at the church and whatnot, and just the the situation isn't gonna isn't gonna allow that. And so mm-hmm. obviously, there'll be some room for creativity uh, to make it uh, a good first summer of ministry. Oh, that's exciting! And Father James, what are you looking forward to most in your first assignment as parochial vicar? Um, serving at Divine Mercy Parish and St. Mary Parish in the Burlington, West Burlington, and Dodgeville area? I'd say the biggest thing for me would be is just being able to walk with people in their faith journeys and then being able to provide them with the sacraments to help them along on their faith journey to really strengthen and build their relationship with Christ. And then I'm also really looking forward to helping out at the Catholic school there in Burlington, Notre Dame, and just being able to really hopefully influence a lot of people's lives and I'll help them to build their relationship with Christ, I would say. Oh, that's great. Deacon Andrew, what about you? When will you return to seminary and what are you looking forward to in this final year of formation leading up to the priesthood? Yeah, as it stands right now, uh, the last week in August is when I'll head back up to the Twin Cities for my final year up there of seminary. And yeah, it'll be, it'll be great to, to obviously serve at the seminary as a deacon uh, in the different ways in which um, we'll be called on to, to serve the other seminarians and in leadership capacities. And then also to uh, be a deacon at my teaching parish where I've been the last few years uh, to be, you know, be able to do more, um, more there. And so I'm looking forward to all the, uh, all the different opportunities that, that are provided through that. Oh, that's cool. Where is your teaching parish? I'm in Maple Maybe. Lake, yeah, Maple Lake, Minnesota, uh, St. Uh-huh. Timothy's Church, uh, and oh, so it's, it's in a small town. Uh, I think quite similar to a lot of towns in our diocese of about 2,500 people, um, awesome. but it's a, it's a pretty Catholic, pretty Catholic town. So it's a pretty vibrant and young parish. So uh, it's, I grew up in the Twin Cities. I grew up in St. Paul. I think pretty close to where you go to school there. Oh, nice, great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So anyway, at Nativity, are you familiar with Nativity? Yep, yep. The, in, the seminary is technically, yep, the seminary is technically in Nativity's uh, parish boundaries. So. so we would always say, go Natives. 
anyway, um, and, and so then I wanted to ask both of you as kind of a final question. What are your hopes for the future for the church in the Diocese of Davenport? And I'd like to start with Father James. I would say my hope for the future church in the diocese is that we continue to grow more saints within the diocese. Um, at this time in the church, you know, there's a lot of young individuals leaving the church, and, you know, and a lot of people can kind of feel down. But this is the moment when God calls out saints and for people to be able to listen to the call of God and to grow in their life and their holiness. And so God willing, one day they may become a saint. Awesome. How about you, uh, Deacon Andrew? What what are your hopes for the future of the church in the Diocese of Davenport? You know, obviously we have a, a proud history uh, of being the Catholic Church in, in our area of the state. Uh, and so continuing with what you know, the great, the great things that have already been done and continue to be done in the diocese, um, but to seek out those new opportunities uh, to reach more people, to recognize that, you know, we're, we're a church on mission, we're a church that can't kind of stay hidden uh, within our, uh, within our church buildings or whatnot, but we need to go out and recognize all the people that we are surrounded by in our communities uh, as people also being uh, searched out by God and to be the witness of Jesus Christ, uh, of Jesus Christ's love for them. Um, and so, yeah, just a church that's, that's ready to go out and proclaim the good news um, and, uh, yeah, ready to be that, uh, that love of Christ uh, to, our, to our communities. That's awesome. And I thank you both so very much for joining me for this podcast today. It's, it's just been great talking with you, and I hope you will come back and talk with us again as you um, minister this come, you know, in, the, in, the, in this year that's ahead. Um, we would love to follow you, and I keep both of you in my prayers. And just thank you so much for your ministry, for saying yes to God. And I hope that people will join us for our next episode of Catholic Messenger Conversations. So thank you. Thank you, Barb. Thank you.